Previously on Great Chocolate Showdown. Holy buttercream. Six home bakers dared to defy gravity. <laughs> oh, no. Which had Brie and Evan floating miles above their competition with their fairy tale cake. I thought it was delightful. <laughs> the chocolate elimination challenge was a party on a plate. So intense. My hands are shaking too bad to do this. And Evan's rooibos tartlets and millionaire bars were exactly the judge's cup of tea. It was ingenious. Leaving Amber and Miley in desperate need of some TLC. I hope I don't go home. But ultimately, Amber's and Masu made the judges say, so long and we'll miss you. They definitely needed more setting time. And she was at home. Now five bakers remain as they battle it out for sweet success. I'm not feeling the most confident. Someone toasting something. <gasps> it feels amazing to be in the final five. I'm really surprised that I've pushed myself this far. This competition has taught me that I don't give up easily and that I will push myself to win. Hello, bakers. Hello. Hello. You are entering the final stretch of this competition. I bet you can almost taste the finale. But your chocolate education is not quite complete. It's time for your next technique test. Bakers. I'm going to teach you how to form and decorate one of the prettiest confections of the chocolate world, the truffle. All truffles begin with a ganache, which is simply a mixture of chocolate and cream, depend on which kind of chocolate you're using. Today, I'm using dark chocolate in a one-to-one -one chocolate and cream ratio. Once the ganache is set, I can roll it into truffle size balls. I'm going to use a scoop so that all my truffles will be the same size. And then I'm going to add my hazelnuts, just pushing them into the center. And this is the fun bit. You really want to get a little bit messy here. Before I decorate my truffles, I have to enrobe them in tempered chocolate or the ganache could leak out when the truffles are at room temperature. Once I, I'm ready to decorate. So I'm doing sprinkles now. I've also got some chopped pistachios. This is a dirty job, and Cynthia looks pristine making truffles. Classic Cynthia. And there you have it, a stunning array of different and delectable truffles. Bakers, you've just been shown how to create some truly tantalizing truffles. But we're not interested in a simple box of chocolates. We want a piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> For your next technique test, you must create a truffle work of art that features two different flavors of truffles. We want velvety chocolate ganache wrapped in vibrant colors and intriguing textures displayed in a creative chocolatey picture. The winner of this technique test will receive a special advantage You'll have three hours <gasps> to create your truffle paintings. <laughs> Ready, steady, get your sweet on. I think this is all I can carry. Our bakers have to make chocolate truffles. <gasps> Then use these truffles to create a work of art. We've all heard of painting by numbers, but this is painting by truffles. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm interested to see how it goes. I love our tiny little 500 square foot house in Hawaii. I'm using that as my inspiration for my art today. For this technique test, I am making a truffle painting of a house with dark chocolate macadamia truffles and dark chocolate orange truffles. Making a house symbolizes how much I love my home. It is a place of joy and creation with my family. Being a stay-at-home mom, my identity has become so wrapped up in that. And this is the first time in years that I'm really doing something for myself. My house that I build today will be much cleaner than mine back home. 
They're good. I'd never say no to a truffle. In this technique test, I am making dark chocolate cherry truffles and cookies and cream truffles. I stopped doing art class in grade seven, so it's been a while since I've painted a picture. Whew. For my truffle painting, I'm going to do a snow-capped mountain scene. This painting just feels so British Columbia, Canada. Home. Oh. How many pounds of chocolate do you think we've tempered? I don't want to, I can't even think that big. <laughs> out of the same ganache because I want to save time. I am making a chocolate bourbon potato chip truffle and a milk chocolate peanut truffle. The picture that I'm painting is a heart. I am painting a heart because I want to send my dad a love letter. He always got my sisters and I truffles for Valentine's Day. So I've got a heart and his favorite flavors. This is going to be a win. Heaping scoops. So I'm painting my canvas with tempered white chocolate. Girl, Oklahoma, my school didn't even have an art class, so we are far from artistic. For this technique test, I am making gold chocolate and toasted walnut truffles and key lime white chocolate truffles. So just a hint of lime, but I do want to make sure that there's enough in there. I am choosing to do a tree truffle painting because I absolutely love nature. Four more degrees, four more degrees. I'm a manager at a zoo. It is a fantastic dream to be able to work around animals. Being in the middle of nature, it hones you in on that there's a bigger aspect to this world than just you. Who at tempered chocolate and rolled truffles at the same time is almost a nightmare. My experience of work doing truffles, it's not clean. It's the last thing that it is. Let me see. You end up with chocolate in places you didn't even know existed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a bare face painting with milk chocolate hazelnut truffles and milk chocolate coconut truffles. I choose a bare face because within the LGBTQ plus community, there is the bear community where most of the guys are on the burlier side. A little bit more meat on their bone, on their face. Let's hope it doesn't end up looking like a raccoon. <laughs> Raccoons are good, just say you did it on purpose. <laughs> Bakers, two hours to go. I think I'm going okay. There's been no major disasters yet, so. Definitely starting to feel the time. <sighs> to figure out how to properly build this picture out of truffles, I'm just laying some truffles down on the picture frame and kind of doing that mental math. Blue truffles for the sky. I just didn't know how many rows I was gonna need. I'm looking at the clock like, Trying not to have a mental breakdown. Yeah, this is not, huh. I'm just laying some truffles down on the picture frame and I'm missing a few blue truffles for the sky. I'm kind of feeling like I just want to cry, but I have to just get this done. Gotta get some more white chocolate tempered so that I can finish off the sky. Go super, super fast, you got it. You do. For this technique test, not only do we have to make two types of truffles, but we have to make a work of art with said truffles. Tons of fun. Once I get the image set, then I can start freezing them in place. Oh, that's enough. How do I want to start attaching? Starting to see a mountain out of this guy. It's coming together now. It's just trying to get on as many truffles as I can, really. There's 20 minutes left on the clock. 38. And I realize I don't have enough truffles to cover my painting. Nope, I'm not going to have enough to finish the whole board. I don't have time to make any more. There's going to be gaps on my canvas. Time is running out, but I still need to do final touches. I grab some goji berries and I make a little flower hedge and I and a chip door. I just get really nervous at the end. Biggers, five minutes, five minutes, let's go. This is it. Come on guys, you can do it. <sighs> Trying to go as fast as I can. I can't even see straight anymore. 
Okay, come on, guys. Oh, my God. I might not be artistic, but this is a work of art. I am so proud of my truffle painting. When I step back and look down, I realize there were glaring holes there, but I think it looks like a bear. Bakers, we asked you to create a chocolatey piece of art featuring two different flavors of truffles. Now it's time for pieces. Bree, please bring us your work of art. My painting is a heart. I made a chocolate bourbon potato chip truffle and a milk chocolate peanut truffle. I'm not a fan of spraying truffles with cocoa butter because as soon as it touches your fingers, it melts and it goes everywhere. Diving into your truffles, your potato chip. I loved it. It actually reminded me of sitting in a bag yes. of potato chips <laughs> with chocolate inside. Brie, you're the queen of salted sweet desserts. Both of them work perfectly, but I feel like I'm getting two versions of the same truffle. Brie, thank you so much. You can head back. Thank you, judges. Lexi, please bring us your work of art. I made a snow-capped mountain scene with dark chocolate cherry truffles and cookies and cream truffles. Once again, Lexi, down to the wire, but you came through with a comp Shall we give this a taste? Yes. Lexi, your cookies and cream truffles were absolutely delicious, very, very sweet, but that is what you expect of cookies and cream. Your chocolate cherry truffle. The cherry element needed to be more pronounced. Thank you so much. You can head back. Thank you, judges. Miley, please bring us your truffle painting. I made a half dark chocolate macadamia nut truffles and dark chocolate orange truffles. It's a very bold picture you've painted us. It's so bright and vibrant. Miley, your ganache was beautiful. It melted in my mouth. Unfortunately, I didn't pick up on the blood orange, and I got a subtle note of the triple sec. And you need to punch up that flavor for us. Miley, dark chocolate is so... To have two dark chocolate truffles was almost a little too much. I would have liked a different chocolate, like a milk chocolate ganache with the macadamia and that would have paired beautifully. Thank you. Evan, please bring us your truffle painting. I made a tree truffle painting with gold chocolate and toasted walnut truffles and key lime white chocolate truffles. Evan, I love the colors you chose. It's a work of art. Let's start with your key lime truffle. Your chocolate was beautifully tempered. That chocolate added an exceptional texture to the creaminess of your key lime ganache that was full of flavor, unbelievable work. But your gold and walnut truffle, I didn't get the snap of the tempered chocolate that you rolled it in. Evan, my background is Eastern European, so I take walnuts very seriously. When it comes to the walnut truffle, it was fabulous. <laughs> the choice of gold chocolate with the toast, a perfect pairing, and your ganache texture is just perfectly set. Thank you so much. Thank you, judges. Gavin, please bring us your truffle painting. I made a bare face chocolate truffle painting and I made it with milk chocolate and hazelnut truffles and milk chocolate and coconut truffles. 
Within the LGBTQ plus community, I identify and belong to a subset known as bears, plus size guys who are earlier side. I wouldn't call it a self portrait <laughs> though. <laughs> Gavin, I like your truffles. The use of 14 was very clever. I just wish there was enough to cover the board. Gavin, your ganache is on point. It is so full of milk chocolate flavor. The issue I have, you've rolled it in coconut. You didn't put coconut inside. Your foie team, I got absolutely dirt and no hazelnut. Gavin, thank you so much. We can head back. Thank you for your comments, judges. I love flavors. I love pushing the envelope on them. This task, however, I didn't deliver on that. And that I can't let happen again. Bakers, congratulations. All of you created chocolate truffle paintings that were truly eye-catching. But there was one baker who created a decadent work of art. And that too? Evan. I won the technique test. That is three in a row. Well done, Evan. You've earned a special advantage in the upcoming chocolate elimination challenge. I love the giant flower wall. I'm thinking, what could flowers have to do with baking? Bakers, you've shown incredible growth and have blossomed in this kitchen to really sow the seeds of competition. For your next chocolate elimination challenge, you must create a chocolatey cake that showcases a flower. Nestled amongst this wall are five golden leaves. To find out what botanical you be baking with, please pluck a leaf from the wall. Gavin. I got elderflower. Free. I got lavender. Evan. I got orange blossom. Miley. I got hibiscus. Lexi, come and pick a leaf. I got rose. I do like roses to look at because they're beautiful and romantic, but to look at, not in my food. Evan, as the winner of the technique test, you get the option of trading your flower with a fellow baker. I could choose lavender because I'm familiar with it. Or I could stick with orange blossom and really challenge myself in this competition. It seems like a great advantage, but I feel like it's a double-edged sword. So Evan, what would you like to do? Evan, will you accept this rose? I think I'm going to keep orange blossom. Bakers, we want to see, smell, and taste your selected flower in the cake you create. The baker who presents us with our least favorite dessert will be going home. You'll have two and a half hours to complete this challenge. Ready? Steady? Get your chocolate on! Anything I touch in the garden generally tends to shrivel up and die. So this will be an interesting task for me. So my hibiscus flower. Yeah, I was very excited to get hibiscus flowers. What a beautiful challenge. I want to smell the flower. Mm -hmm. I want to see it through decor on top of the cake. And I want to taste every single flower. I got the orange blossom, which I'm really not familiar with. For this chocolate elimination challenge, I'm making chocolate cake with orange blossom buttercream. Oh, orange blossom has such an elegant aroma. Interestingly, it smells nothing like orange. It smells like springtime. I absolutely adore it. 
I am making a white chocolate lavender cake with lavender lemon jam. Lavender is used in a lot of body care, so if you use too much of it, you're reminding people of their grandma, and not in a good way. <laughs> I want them to eat the cake, not want to like bathe in it or use it as a night cream. <laughs> It is such a perfumed flower. So Brie has got to make sure to stay inside of her measurements. Yeah. I got my cakes in the oven, and now I'm working on the jam that's going to be the filling inside my cake. As it cools, it will start to set. This whole competition, literally anybody's game. It could be a really great cake, but if someone else's was better or yours was not executed well enough, you are going home. I use a lavender vanilla bubble bath. It's very calming. Wish I had some now. My cake batter is forming up nicely. For this task, I'm making elderflower cake with white chocolate buttercream. The taste of an elderflower is sweet, so I want to introduce elements of acidity to balance the overall sweetness of the cake via the lemon elements in my sponge and compote made of blueberries and raspberries. Elderflower is a wildflower in the UK, and it's clever that Gavin's pairing it with lemon, which is what most people do, but it's quite a complimentary aroma to a lot of fruits. I'm hoping to create maybe a marriage in heaven. I love making cakes, but a flowery cake? Never done that. I will do a rose water and cardamom cake base. I'm going to make a rose jelly, and I'm gonna do a dark chocolate buttercream. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my cake. The batter's going pretty good, but I need to start figuring out exactly the balance of rose water to put into my cake. Rose is a very difficult flower to work with because you really have to taste and hit your flavor components because rose can be overwhelming to the point it tastes like potpourri. Mm. I think it's at a good level right now. It's starting to come together nicely. I love hibiscus. We grow hibiscus in our yard and it is fragrant. And I hope that my cake speaks to that. OK, let's get on in there. I am making a chocolate hibiscus cake with a ruby chocolate buttercream frosting. Hibiscus flower is a tart flavor that almost tastes like cranberry. It's really good. I'm going to infuse hibiscus into my cocoa powder cake, into a curd, and also in a Swiss meringue buttercream. Don't want it to be too much. Just when I think that I've added, and I'm going to add more. That's what the judges want to see from me. The hibiscus has an aroma, but it's not as distinctive as, say, lavender no. or rose. So Miley needs to compensate by upping that berry yeah. factor. Well, I love the fact that she has ruby chocolate. Ruby chocolate is acidic. The two together could be fantastic. Absolutely. I wonder if this is enough. Bakers, one hour left. Yeah. An hour's left on the clock. I've got my cakes out of the oven, my jam in the refrigerator setting. Everything is going to plan. I got the hard part done. Someone toasting something. One hour left. Someone toasting something. Oh, <gasps> what? Oh. I forgot it was on. We left the burner on my stove. And when I took my cakes out of the oven, I set one square on top of it. Ah, that's hot. <gasps> one of my cakes is dead. Rest in peace. It's gone. What am I gonna do? So I have to pivot, and I whip up another layer of cake. Serving the judges a two-layer cake, I know it's not going to be enough. So I have to make this cake work. I'm not going down without a fight. It's about to be a fastest cake layer. Quick stir, come on. Work it again. For this elimination challenge, we must create a chocolatey cake that showcases a flower. Just need to make my Swiss meringue buttercream. I'm going to add in some elderflower liqueur. I don't want it to be too strong and really punchy. I don't want to get the judges, oh, do I do it, do it, do it, do it? No, I'll go one more. 
party atmosphere. I'd be surprised if I'm covered in purple at the end. The filling of my cake is a hibiscus curd pastry cream. I think that's good. And now I need to get started on my white chocolate pastry cream. I feel like I have a lot of things going on at once. It's a little bit intense. I want to prove to the judges that I really want to be here. The days of pouring warm ganache into a cake no. are gone. We need everything at the precise temperature to allow the cake to then set properly. So I take my cake out of the blast chiller. I'm worried there may be on the dry side. Um, I'm worried because I did make a rose simple syrup that I can use to soak the cake. Just putting a tiny little bit in. My cakes are out of the oven. I now need to get started on my Swiss meringue buttercream. To make sure that the aroma of orange blossom is present, I'm going to incorporate it into the Swiss meringue buttercream. Oh, perfect. Bakers, 30 minutes left. Come on, Come on bakers. Yeah, they're not burnt, so I'm pretty happy about that. My third cake looks great, but I'm looking at the clock, and I know that I don't have time to chill it properly. Oh. So I make the executive decision to just leave it alone and go with my two layers. I got two layers. I, got, I, don't know, I just got two layers. Precision is something we're paying particular attention to. Straight-sided, level cakes with polished decor is what we're after. Uniform and flat. When piping my buttercream layer, I make sure to actually pipe it up a little bit more at the edges of the sponge because I want to trap the compote in between. John, the danger with going into three layers of sponge or beyond is that it can look like the Lini Terra Pisa. My filling, which is a rose jelly, it is not setting up as fast as I'd hoped. If I put this rose jelly in my cake, it'll ruin everything. So I decide to pivot. I toast some pistachios and almonds. Everyone loves a crunchy jelly, right? And then coat all of that in my jelly and use that as my filling. Top layer. This is a top. Oh, this day. So I pipe my Swiss meringue buttercream border and start filling my cake with jam. And as I turn my cake around, I'm like, uh-oh, there is jam oozing out of my cake. I'm losing my jam. The jam is oozing because it's not set. I got to figure out how to keep this jam in this cake. Let's see if I can patch and repair. At the end of the day, this is an elimination challenge, and they're pushing themselves right now, and they need to deliver, or they're mm -hmm. going home. This feels kind of tricky. I put Swiss meringue buttercream, then my hibiscus curd in the middle, and I save room to pipe my white chocolate pastry cream. Oh, shoot. I realize I made a mistake. Well, I didn't put enough of my buttercream to keep my fillings from seeping out. I'm gonna take my cake layer off. Is it too late? I don't know if people do this where they take it off. I feel like you're not supposed to. Bad idea. I don't think you can take a layer of cake off. And, oh, and it's not staying. Shoot. I start to panic. The filling is starting to come out, and my cake is falling apart. I shouldn't have shifted the cake. I'm falling apart. This cake might send me home. It has been such a pleasure baking in this kitchen. Oh, and it's not staying. The cake is tipping over. I might lose the entire cake. I refuse to give up right now. I tell myself to keep going. I realize that the only way to save my cake might be the blast chiller. I try to reinforce the cake with straws. So stabilize it. I need this cake to stay in one piece. I need to get decorating, which leaves. Bring it all together. 
What is critically important is that our bakers really focus on their chocolate decor work. We need to see that flower represented. I'm going to do a chocolate orange half that will sit on top of my cake. And I'm going to make flowers with modeling chocolate to decorate the outside of my cake. I have to make a white chocolate collar that's going to go around my cake for decoration. I don't know if I can do this in time. I can do this. Are you hand rolling roses? I am. Press. Bakers, 10 minutes to go. Let's Come go. On. Come on, bakers. It's not exactly what I had planned. It looks like it's gonna stay put. I'm crossing my fingers and praying for a miracle. Listen to your elder, Flower. One last push. They're breaking as they come out. <sighs> they weren't fat. Okay. Very cute. Yes, yes. I am putting a white chocolate collar around this cake. Oh. <gasps> When I peel off the acetate, one spot that just did not take as well as the rest of it. That's a loss. The universe wants me out of this competition. <sighs> I'm giving y'all the best I got today. Bakers, one minute to go. Keep going. Uh, no, it's not tempered. This is not what I envisioned, but it's all that I got. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time's up. Okay. You got something. Yeah, I'm just sad. I had like yeah. a little thing in my mind. I know, but you got it. You got it. I don't know what I could have done better. I feel like I gave it my all, and that's all I had to give. Thank you. Good job. It's so pretty. It oh, turned out you. good. It did. <laughs> I have literally created a little bit of a miracle. But I have no idea what's going on inside this cake with my jam or how much is left in there. Bakers, we asked you to create a chocolatey cake, beautiful bloom. Gavin, please bring us your cake. The flower I selected was elderflower. And I made for you today an elderflower cake with white chocolate buttercream. I love the delicacy of the sides of the cake. This is a bit more Arctic tundra with the sharp angles where this has such a softness and it really speaks to the elderflower. Gavin, the cream to sponge is flawless. When I tasted your cake, I got initially that hint of lemon and then the elderflower. I didn't get your liqueur, I will admit. I felt that your sponge had a beautiful crumb. Your compote balanced really well with the sponge. Gavin, thank you so much. You can head back. Bree, please bring us your cake. I picked lavender. I've made a white chocolate lavender cake with a lavender lemon jam. To me, a beautiful struggle. I watched you <sighs> until I couldn't watch you. <laughs> it looked like a car crash. And you soldiered on. Well done. Bree. I was eating this thinking this is probably one of my favorite lavender cakes that I've had. And I make lavender cake. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't too faint. It was just a right delicate. You were able to keep a good amount of that jelly inside. I would have liked a little bit more because that's where the lavender flavor was. In the absence of the third cake layer, we're missing an extra opportunity to build on that lavender flavor. Evan, it's your turn. Please bring us your cake. The flower I had was orange blossom. The cake that I have made for you is a chocolate cake with orange blossom buttercream. Evan, your chocolate cake layers were moist and delicious. You've delivered on the chocolate. Your orange blossom buttercream, you nailed the flavor. 
your flowers. It's elegant, it's simple. You didn't need that tempered chocolate garnish on top. It draws your eye away from this gorgeous cake you've designed, and you're drawn to here, and that doesn't look good. Thank you so much. You can head back. I definitely think I overdid it with my decor. It. Lexi, please bring us your cake. I picked roses. So the cake that I have made is a rose water cardamom cake with a rose jelly filling. The simplicity of your cake, the detail in your roses, I love it. Lexi, unfortunately for me, the lower half of your sponge was too dry. Flooding it with more of your rose syrup would have added moisture and would have amplified the rose flavor because I fear by adding rose water to the cake batter, it cooked away. Thank you so much. You can head back. A rose is a beautiful thing, but sometimes get pricked by the thorns. Miley, please bring us your cake. Today I picked the hibiscus flower. And so I made for you a chocolate hibiscus cake with a ruby chocolate buttercream. We can see some imperfections, get the collar to be as precise as possible. Miley, I absolutely love what you've presented us. Is it refined? Is there precision? Absolutely not but you nailed the chocolate aspect of the cake. For me, I got no hibiscus in this cake. I do want to talk about the hibiscus. You added hibiscus powder to the cake, because I will say I didn't pick up on the hibiscus flavor. Did you ingredients or your liquid? I added it to the dry ingredients. I think the hibiscus powder should have gone into hot water like tea, let it steep, and I think that's why the flavor doesn't come through. Miley, thank you so much. You can head back. Thank you. Bakers, you've given us a beautiful selection of bloom-filled bakes. Now, we have a very tough decision to make. Bakers, due to create a chocolate cake showcasing a selected flower. Some of your cakes gave us stunning bouquets of floral notes and chocolates, but others failed to showcase the flavor potential of their flowers. When I call your name, please step forward. Gavin and Evan. The two of you had our favorite desserts of this challenge. Hold on. <laughs> there was one baker who gave us a cake that was bursting with floral flavor, aroma, and beauty. Gavin. Good job. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. The two of you are really flourishing in this competition. You both move on to the next round. I'm making it to the final four. I'm over the moon about that. Bree, Lexi, and Miley. Unfortunately, your cakes were accessible. Lexi, we found the sponge of your cake dry and your rose flavor muted. Bree, we were longing for a lot more lavender in your cake. Miley, at this point in the competition, we expect more precision in your presentation. Unfortunately, one of you must leave this kitchen. The baker who is going home is... Lexi. That means Bree and Miley, you can join the others. Lexi, we've witnessed you learn and adapt very quickly throughout this competition. And it's been our distinct pleasure to get to know you, Lexi. You've gone down to the wire in nearly every bake. Leave it to the former ballerina to always keep us on our toes. So happy tears. <laughs> Everyone, please come say goodbye to Lexi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
<laughs> but these are not sad tears. Top five. Top five. I have learned so much about baking. Delicious chocolate pastry cream. Lexi, it was so good. I have learned about myself. I finished. I know it's just up from here. Next time on Great Chocolate Showdown, four bakers attempt to rise above the rest. These macarons are going to be out of this world. With a melt-in-your-mouth macaron top. One of the more difficult desserts to execute. Then we'll set the table and the stage. Word. As the final four design a dress of dessert on the catwalk. I'm leaving everything on the table for this bake. This really is hard.